All right, good evening, everyone. Today, we're going to work on four more skills, right? Uh, the skills that we're going to work on. Am I sharing my, my uh, book with you? No. Not yet. Okay, now I will. One moment, please. Um, four more skills, three grammar ones, three grammar skills, and one reading skill. Okay, that's the, that's the goal today, okay? So now I am, I guess. Let's take a look at the grammar skill that we're going to work on today. We did work on, let me say, skill last time, right? What was the skill, the last skill? The ER, ER structure, we did that. And I bet you guys remember it. You never forget it, you know, after that time. We talked about using have and how, you know, let me say it's followed by past participle, right? Remember, that is verb three. We also spoke about you know, the verb yes. to be and how it's followed by present participle. Sometimes it's followed by past participle, you know, when it's passive, right? When there's passive going on. Yeah. Okay. So, and we did that. I think we reached skill 32. So today we want to work on skill 32 and skill 33 and skill 34. Okay. Let's take a look at them one by one. I'm trying to enlarge this a little bit so it can be clearer for you. Okay. So skill 32, yes, Dr. Mahmoud, what's up? I noticed the uh, final material is easier than mid material. What do you think? Yeah, that's what lots of students tell me. And I'm glad. You know why? <laughs> this is, I'll tell you why. Because the written expressions are more easy than the, um, uh, the, the, the let me say, the structural uh, questions the ones that you have to really circle the correct answer yeah they're more they're those are more difficult yeah yeah okay so yeah you're right about that 100 percent. and that's a comment that also lots of classes that i taught told me so uh i'm glad though do you know why because you had a lot of energy at the beginning and so you worked hard on the difficult stuff and now you know it's normal, guys. You know, we get less energetic as, you know, let me say the semester develops because there's a lot of work to do, you know. And so it's good that, you know, the material is material that probably you have come across before. And so um, let me say it's like you're reviving, revising it. And that's really good. And by the way, let me say all skills, if you notice, they really uh, complete each other. I mean, if you work on this like skill 32, skill 32 is going to help 31. It's going to help 33. Skill 33 is going to help 32, the other skills and the ones that follow. So if I were you, I would work on every skill, you know, let me say um, individually in a very strong way where I make, I get myself to master it. So like all these skills, you know, really assist each other in a way where your language gets better, you develop in terms of the language and there's always development, no matter how good you are. I mean, on the scale, you know, I mean, I teach you this course, right? Uh, let me say, I assist you. I don't really teach you. You teach yourself, really. But I help you, you know, like understand things in a better way, all right? Guide you in some kind of way. So the thing is that even I, you know, un, you know, um, let me say, develop things more as I repeat. It's not like, you know, um, yeah, they're not going to be new to me. I mean, like, uh, because I use the language all the time, but still there, it, it does take some kind of development, you know, some development does take place in me also. Okay, so in that, we share this, but the, the level is like different, okay? Yeah. So we want to take a look at skill 32. I'm glad that you said that and you shared that. And I bet like most of your, uh, let me say, colleagues, classmates, you know, also feel like this about, you know, the remaining material and hopefully it'll get easier. So after will, this is now, you know, very easy now. <laughs> after will, after would, or other models. Do you know why? Because we have really taken this before. Um, use the base form of the verb. Like when we took conditional sentences, right? If you uh, drink a lot of caffeine, if you drink a lot of coffee, you will stay up till a very late time at night. You will not, which means you won't. You will not. I just want to, you know, show it to you, not contracted, you know, you will not, means won't, uh, uh, be able to sleep. Um, see, will not, will was followed by be, all right? So the thing is that, you know, these models, we call these verbs model verbs, huh? and these verbs are verbs that need another verb to follow them, 
All right. Um, and the when the when the, when the verb when a verb follows these model verbs, uh, will and would and of course should. We talked about them yesterday, by the way. This is why you feel they're easy because they are contained in other skills. You got it, Doctor Mahmoud. Why you think they're easy? Because we mention sometimes certain skills. Let me say in another skill. That's why you feel, because now you have like, you have built a good base. So the new material is really not new. It is, because this is language. It's contained in the other materials and the other skills. So you, you have, listen, you have reached skill 32. So what are you saying? If you reach skill 32 and you have not noticed that it's getting easier, then you know what? I'm sorry to say, but you have a problem. That means. Um, so the fact that you are noticing or that you have noticed that it's getting easier, it means that you have developed a lot. And these new skills are not new to you because you paid attention to them in the other skills. Got it? This is why. So back to uh, the skill. Uh, the skill says here, guys, that after will, would, or other models, of course, the other models we have discussed before, we said there's shall, there's may, there's might, right? Um, these are all the, the very popular ones that, you know, are considered model verbs. Okay. Will, would, shall, may, might, can, can, I almost forgot that one. Very important, of course. Um, and of course the, the past form of them, we can say, we can say can, could, um, may, might, shall, should. Okay. So they don't mean the same all the time, by the way. Okay. They don't mean the same all the time because shall is like will. It means, you know, sofa in Arabic, we say. All right, future, it refers to future. Um, but uh, let me say could means past ability, something that you could do in the past. Maybe, maybe now you don't know how to do it. Maybe, not necessarily. Like you can say something like, when I was a child, I could do the splits. You know, to do the splits. Um, I mean, like you could move your, your body in a very, let me say, elastic manner. Like now as we age, I don't know. I remember when I was young, I used to do cartwheels. You know, those cartwheels that you flip in, you know, in, you know, children do that all the time, but now, oh no, I don't think so. I'll break my body if I, if I do something like that. <laughs> okay. So I don't think I can do cartwheels. So I could say something like, I can say something like I could do cartwheels when I was young. Um, and, um, sometimes it means that I can't right now, honestly speaking, because it's used to describe or, you know, uh, you know, past ability, I mean, okay. Past ability, like what you were able to do in the past, um, there are things when we're young, we can do, we could do, I'm not saying, I'm not going to say we can't, we could do, but now we can't. There are things that when we were children, we could do, and we still can't do them now. And there are things that when we were children, we couldn't do, but now we can't like drive a car. Okay. Um, so basically uh, back to our lesson and the skill itself, huh? these model verbs, like again, can, could, will, may, might, shall, huh? should, um, if they are mentioned, if they are found in a sentence, if you want to use them to create your sentence, let me, any sentence about you, all right, you have to follow them with what a verb that is the base form. And base form means, remember what the base form is? Verbs that have no, no what additions to them, all right? Mujarrad, we say in Arabic, like these verbs. Let me go back to the um, we had something here. See this? Like these kinds of verbs. No additions, no past, no S added, no ING, no verb three. They are base. Base means like with no additions, no changes. They don't show any kind of tense. All right. Now, where does the tense show then if they don't show tense? You know, tense means it's zaman, guys. Huh? Like where does that show then if, it's, if it doesn't show on the verb? It shows on the first verb. And what is the first verb? The model. So when I say something like, um, what was I saying? Gosh, um, I can swim. What's the what's the tense, guys? Swim is let me say base form. It doesn't show tense. But when I say I can swim, where is the tense? Tell me. What's the tense? I can swim. When you say I can swim, what are you talking about now? The future? Uh, like, let me say you're describing your situation in general. What? Tell me. What, what's wrong? Is that so hard? I can swim. I can drive a car. Ability and present. Yes, good job. 
So with these guys, with the model verbs, let me say, like will, would, everyone is a case in some kind of way. Each and every one means something different. They don't mean the same thing. Only grammatically, all of them are followed by base form verb, a verb that is in the base form, okay? That's what's similar between them. They all require another verb, which is main, you know after them, and it has to be in the base form. And you try them out in sentences and you will see. Huh? Put all of them in, a, each one of them in a sentence and try out and see. Um, but they're very different in terms of tense. Is the man guys, they, they're different in tense, what they, uh, the kind of tense that they incorporate, let me say. Huh? And they are very different in terms of the meaning of each one of them. So when you say, I can swim, you're telling me about your ability in general, all right? It's like a fact about you, right? I can drive a car. I can speak English. See, right? You're not talking about now. You're talking about in general, you know? Sometimes you mean now, I mean, it depends on the context. But like generally speaking, when we talk about people that can do certain things, like he can, uh, let me say, fly a plane. He can uh, meet people regularly, you know, he's social, he can speak to people. It doesn't mean now, guys. I mean, like, you know, he can make people, you know, feel uh, attached, connected, um, you know, at home when they speak to him, something like that. So it's basically that you're talking about, like, you're describing someone here. And it's like, this is the, the character of the person. We talk about character, let me say. Uh, we, we're not talking about, let me say, just now. We're talking about something, let me say, that has to do with, like, uh, let me say, uh, you know, a fact about the person. Fa personal facts, we say. Personal, not scientific facts. Personal, okay, facts. about Because we do say this person's honest. That's a personal fact. This person is decent. This person is, I'm sorry to say this, but this person is a liar. Like, it's, a, it's something that he does and practices in general. Right. It's frequent about him. His lying, you know, let me say <laughs> words are, you know, uh, what let me say, describe him or her. Let me say. Right. OK, let's take a look at uh, the sentences here. And um, I gave you a sentence and there are sentences here. So why not just discuss them? All right. So whenever you 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 see a model, like I said, the models are these will, would, shall, should, can, could, may, might, uh, must too, must, you must follow the rules, right? Yeah. So you should be sure that the verb that follows it, that follows these each and every one of these models, what is in base form, okay? Look at these examples. The boat, huh? you know what the boat is. What's a boat in Arabic? What's a boat, guys? Qarib. Yeah. Qarib. Qarib. Good. Sorry about that, guys. The boat will what? Of course, this is wrong. Will what? You tell me. No, I'm not going to tell you. What's this? What's the correct answer? The boat will leave. Will... Yeah, base form. After will. Okay. We should always leave. have base form. Leave. So L-E-A-V, what? E. And remove the I-N-G at 3 o'clock. So it looks like, guys, that there is like a schedule where boats come and leave. Probably, all right, like a bus station or like a train station or something of that like, that kind, like jazzy, right? Buses and so on. So the doctor uh, may, this is a secretary speaking, you know, you might have, let me say, visited a doctor's clinic and the secretary, you know, you know, when you come in into a doctor's clinic, there's a secretary at the desk and she might tell you something like, you know, uh, the doctor may, may what? This is incorrect there, may what? May arrive. 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 Good. No S. Okay. Base form. May arrive soon. Why did she say that the doctor may arrive soon? Hmm? Because maybe, guys, she's used to him probably coming at this time. Possibility. But Possibility, at the same time, certain. yes. At the same time, you know, doctors sometimes, I mean physicians, mostly if they um, sometimes get emergency calls from a hospital, they won't come. And so if you tell her, well, you said he will come soon. She'll tell you, oh, no, 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 no. Wait a here a second. I did not say he will come. I said he may. May means rubbama. Maybe yes, maybe no. 50 yes, 50 no. Okay? That's what it means. That's what may means, all right? Yeah. And even if she said might, might is even less than 50, you know? 50 or not just 50, less than 50, all right? If you say might. 
All right. So the percentage of him doing the action, the action here is, of course, arrive, guys. All right. So let's take a look at the students. All right. The students hmm, must. What? What's the problem? Take. Take. Exactly. So all of these model verbs should be followed by infinitive leave, arrive, take. The students must take the exam. Okay, they must, because if, listen, guys, in terms of meaning, when you say must, it means they, what? If they do it, they get a, a result. If they don't do it, it means- They have they to, they have to. What does it mean? Yeah. It means they have to, to get. Listen, it means they will be suspended or they will get a zero. Yeah. That's what I mean, yeah. simply. It's not like you're going to tolerate this kind of behavior where it students depends on, say miss uh, an exam. Yeah. There should be like, I mean, a real big reason, let me say, um, where someone, if, if someone misses an exam, like probably someone went to hospital or some, you know, there was an emergency case or something, a real emergency, not just an, just, you know, oh, my stomach was hurting me. Like, you know, some students might try things out like that, you know, that does not work. All right. So there should be like a severe case because, you know, it's not easy to do an exam, you know, to give an exam to a student by himself himself or herself, because it really means, guys, changing the questions. And do you know that, you know, if you're if, if, a, if a, a teacher or a professor is serious about writing questions, writing questions takes at least two hours. I mean, unless it's like, you know, uh, you know, a one a quiz where you just ask a paragraph question or an essay question, but then you're going to get busy grading those essays and those paragraphs. Okay, so easy questions um, will take, let me say, a lot of grading most of the times. All right, yeah, but ones where you give you know special time and effort to them. In, I mean, like when you do uh, write the questions, I mean, and or prepare them, you know, grading them is going to be a whole lot easier. Okay, yeah. Um, so yeah, you have the answers here and you were all correct. Thank God. So we want to move to the questions. And by the way, I think we discussed will, will means, you know, you're talking about the future, huh? An expectation in the future, not, a, not a prediction expectation. Okay. Um, and we talked about, I think before we talked about shell and I said that shell is like will in meaning, but it's like very formal. We talked, uh, I don't know, should, I think we did not talk about it yet. We talked about can, it means ability, and could means past ability. May and we just talked about them and said they refer to you uh, possibly or probably doing the action, whatever the action is. This one is stronger than this one. Maybe this shows like 50% or 60, but this one shows like 30% of the action to happen. And must means that you're required. If you don't do the thing here, Mm -hmm. then you will get punished. And if you do it, then you're you're fine in terms of your situation. You know, you won't, let me say, you're okay. I mean, it's not like you'll get rewarded if you take the exam. You took it, okay? Like how you perform is the reward. How you perform in the exam is going to be either rewarding or not, right? But if you, if you take it, it's not like you will be rewarded, okay? It's like what you do um, as you take the exam in the exam, okay? But if you don't take it, this means, you know, you will get punished, either kicked out or you will get scolded. That's the least, you know, and it's not even nice to be scolded, right? Yeah, so you have to prepare for this moment and you have to be ready for it, right? Um, and I think we should talk a little bit about um, should. Of course, who knows how we how should is used in a sentence. Give me an example on should and we'll talk about it a little bit. I'm sure that many of you guys have used should in sentences before. Who can use it in a sentence? Let me see what you have. So, who wants to give me a sentence that has should? Dr. Salab, do you want to give me one? I know that you're good. At, you, you can really do a good sentence or create a good sentence. Uh, you should study hard. Good. You should study hard. Who are you to tell me this, Dr. Salam? You're t imagine that you're telling me this sentence. Who are you to me if you told me this sentence? Your mom or your teacher. Good, your mom, your teacher, good. Because, you know, you're giving advice. Is this how you, you give advice to your son, your daughter? Is that how you give them advice? You yeah. Should? Yeah. And do you know how this yeah. translates? 
Do you know how this translates when you say you should in Arabic? What does it mean, you should? How does it translate in Arabic? It means you. Yajib. Yajib? What? Means mm -hmm. wajib. Wajib. Okay, uh, it's al-wajib. Uh -huh. It's not like you are, uh, let me say, ordering them. They don't feel ordered. Because, you know, the thing is about people, even if they really, you know, should do something and you use the, the tone where you order them, okay, like you're dictating them, like you use must. Must is dictate. dictate. You're dictating someone. You must study, all right? It's like you're telling them, or, or I'll punish you, uh -huh. or I'll kill you, you know? It's like you're showing them. The word must really, guys, when it's said, it's like in a direct or an indirect way, you're, 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 you know, like you're mentioning punishment. Even if you don't mention it, this is just how it's understood. Okay. So punishment is in the air, as they say. All right. And um, sometimes reward is in the air, but some people don't like, even they don't care about reward. I'm sorry. They don't care about reward because the tone itself is not one that people would like you know you to use on them so they don't care about i don't want to be rewarded i don't like this tone you're talking to me like as if you can control me you know that's must but should yeah that's how it is should means you're telling the person that is listening to you that i am giving you advice you can take it or what do we say you can take it or leave it leave it exactly. mm -hmm. and that's a nice way you know to tell people what to do uh, that's, you know, something more comfortable to listen to. All right. Yeah. Should is more comfortable to listen to. All right. Because you're not saying anything, um, that shows punishment or reward. All right. It just reminds them of their humanity. All right. And why they are, you know, why they exist in the world, the word should, okay. Uh, of their purpose in some kind of way. And even the word wajib, we like it. Right. Uh, but the amr, we don't, right. Must is amr. All right. Of course, the opposite of must is what, who knows, mustn't which means el memnu' you mustn't smoke in hospitals all right um and it's uh, pro like, prohibited yeah. actions yeah yes exactly and shouldn't is just like should but it's the opposite all right you shouldn't raise your voice when your mom speaks to you for example um sometimes we don't say you shouldn't you just say you should keep calm when talking to your mom okay or to your teacher you could you should be calm all right you should not, um, which means you should not raise your voice, right? Yeah, in some in some kind of way, it means that. All right, so I hope that this is clear, guys. Did we leave something else? I think would, you know, um, usually we use would for which situations? Who, who can tell me, like, when we assume certain things? Um, remember, we took it in conditional sentences when I said something like, if I were you, I would study if I were you, I would probably go home instead of waste my time in the streets with these troublemakers, for example. Um, so it, the word would, you know, uh, you know, suggests things to the listener. All right. Um, because it, it, it's also like should in a way, you know why? Because it does not order you in a direct way. Okay. Um, it, it does have like some kind of distance. Look at it because it's even past in terms of form. It's not, although it's the past of will, it doesn't mean, uh, you know, it doesn't mean anything related to will. Can you imagine? Uh, it does not mean will at all. Okay. Um, because will means I'm going to, in a way, do something in the future. It means an Arabic sofa. So wood does not mean sofa at all in any kind of way, although it is kind of, you know, in a way um, constructed out of will or the past. Doctor, will. could we say it's for uh, polite uh, asking? Uh, for you can use or... it in that kind of way. Would you like to come? Would with... you please? We yeah, say, there are, there uh, are would, different would you reasons, please? you know, there are different mm -hmm. reasons why we use wood. But it is very polite. Would is polite, just like should. It's polite when you use it, okay? Because it, it creates distance. And the distance means as if you don't dictate people when you speak to them. You give them the space to think, to make a choice in, in whatever way you use it. You see? Got it? In in whatever way you use it even, okay? let's. Do, what I'm going to do is that we're going to focus on the sentences that we have here. And I'm going to create sentences that are similar to these for this, you know, like in your exam, okay? So we just want to make sure that we understand the sentences that we have, and hopefully we have wood in one of the sentences, okay? Um, all right, let's take a look at 
maybe sentence one, who would like to? We just make sure that we cover, you know, all these models, let me say. Who would like to look at sentence one and discuss it for me? So it says here, each of the following sentences contains a verb formed with a model, underline the verbs twice. So um, this is a verb. This is, you know, the auxiliary verb over here. And then we have to indicate whether these sentences are correct or incorrect. Who would like to work on these? Dr. Badria, I saw your hand up, right? Yes. Okay, go ahead. ما بعرف إذا إني رافعة إيدي ولا لا بس بجاوب ما في مشكلة. Yeah, go ahead. بس خليها على ال خليها على الجملة لو سمحتي. Oh, I removed it. I'm I'm looking for something else here because I don't. Oh, okay. I'm just looking at. I'm trying to see if eight has wood. So the next person probably or the the following person can go for eight. I'm looking for a sentence that has wood. That's what I was doing. I'm sorry about that. Go ahead, Dr. Babri. I'll. تمام. Okay. Uh, sentence number one or two? Whichever one you want. But you have to fix the mistake in the second one if you want to go for the second. Go for the second. Okay. The first is correct. The television move will finish in a few minutes. Movie. Movie. This is a correct uh, television movie. movie. Dr. Badria, right? The television movie will finish in uh, a few minutes. This is incorrect sentences because uh, after will, we use the uh, main uh, form of the pair not uh, added uh, as uh, so the correct sentence the television movie will finish in a few minutes good job the television movie yes will finish good because guys the skill is about you know the fact that we need to use base form after all these models we have you know like the extra step that we took is that i discussed the meaning we should you should know the meanings of these words i mean all right and um, but in the exam, they're just going to, you know, check out and see if you know that these model verbs should be followed by, you know, infinitive here. It's lower. Lower is infinitive, by the way, in the first example. Lower means like, ينزل, OK, might lower the price. ينزل السعر, OK, so this is what it means. So if you want to make it present simple, you add S to it. You want to make it past, you add ED to it. But here there's no additions to this, you know, let me say verb. Do you know why? Because it's space form, because it's followed by might. Okay, and as, as Dr. Badria said over here, we have the auxiliary will. Will is followed by base form. Why do we have ES here? So remove the ES and then it's fine. It's correct. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Badria. Let's take a look at um, sentence maybe five and then eight. Five. Who would like to work on five for me? Dr. Dua Taha. She probably can't hear us, Dr. Sahar. Five, Doctor. All right, Dr. Dua, and then we'll ask Dr. Sahar. Yeah, five. The the machine may click off if it's overused. Uh, may click off. Yeah, may click we off. We have to use the best form. Yeah, click word. means what in Arabic? Do you know what it click off? Clicks off. So click means in Arabic a... what? Disconnect. That's in Arabic. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it when makes it's overused, right? What does disconnect yeah. mean in Arabic or click off? Good, good. You know, it's like listen, guys, if you use electricity, you know, let me say, um, let me say a lot, right? Or if you use like a lot of let me say voltage of electricity, what will happen at your house if your uh house does not really can let me say can tolerate that amount of electricity used? What will happen? It will Click off, tifsil, right? We don't have, as they say in Jordan, thalatifaz, right? Thalatifaz, huh? then it will click off, all right? Yeah. And so uh, there are certain machines, guys, when they are used, they just click off. Do you know why? Because if they get very hot, let me say, they can get burned, all right? Um, and so this is something really good. It's just like the, uh, you know, let me say, lots of, uh, let me say, machines are like that, like that, like the AC um, you know, they click off if they are overused. Overused might like, you know, they get warm, very warm or even hot, let me say. And we don't want the wires to, you know, let me say, um, get burned and so on. And, you know, then it will, yeah, that it'll, 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 it'll break down, them. right? Yes. Yeah. All right. Anyway, the goal is to tell you may, no clicks, no S, right? Just base form after may. Let's do eight. Who's going to do eight? Because we were looking for wood. 
Uh, who's speaking here? Let me see. Yes, please do, Dr. Mahmoud. Would anyone like to see that movie? Mm -hmm. I think okay. it's incorrect because we should say like. Yes. Correct. It's incorrect. Good. Thank you. This is a question. See, look, question. And in a question, of course, the, um, let me say, the auxiliary huh, comes before, you know, let me say, like it comes over here, right? Uh, would anyone before the subject? This is the subject. That's why. So the here the auxiliary, the, the question word, let me say, I'm sorry, comes first, you know, either the auxiliary or the question word, right? Yeah. So would anyone like, huh? so this is the auxiliary that comes first. That is the helping verb comes first, all right? And then anyone is the subject. And then we have, of course, guys, since we have would, you know, the, it influences the verb. The verb should be what? Base form, okay? Okay? So not ed. To Now, would is past. So you don't need past here. Remember when we talked about, guys, um, where the, uh, you know, the tense uh, shows itself? In, uh, let me say, uh, questions or sentences where you have these verbs, the auxiliary verbs, the verb that follows uh, is always base form. Now, the tense shows in these. Would, okay, um, ha reveals its its tense through it. Can does that too. Could does that too, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all right? So you don't need any tense here. Would anyone like to see the movie? And of course, it does not refer to past, even though this looks like it's past, but it's not. This is a suggestion. When we say, would would anyone like to see the movie? It means when, now or the future. Would, although the form, uh, the, we say it's the past form of will, it doesn't mean it's a past verb or it refers to past. It's just the fo past form. Okay, with auxiliaries, like I said, each and every word, you know, means something different, is used in a different way than the other. But the say the things in common between them is all of these auxiliaries, you know, they should be followed by a verb and the verb is in the base form. So in terms of meaning, guys, it means would anyone, yes, Dr. Sahad, do you want to tell me the meaning? Doctor, I don't say uh, here you are. Yeah, I'm just saying that would anyone like to see the movie refers to the future, not to, you know, or the or the present. Present closer to future, though, okay? Because even in Arabic, we say, في حد حابب يحضر الفيلم, all right? That's what it means in Arabic, guys. And so if if we have five yeses, then what we will do, if not on the spot, you know, we will, you know, start watching the movie together. It will be maybe tonight or tomorrow or next week, you know? So it's either, you know, uh, the the on the spot future, which is not far away from now, or it could be any time in the future when I ask such a question. All right, yeah, okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Right, Dr. Salam. I saw your hand up. Would you like to do ten for us? Okay. Which uh, sentence? Ten. How about ten for us? Okay. She will work on the project only if she can have a full-time secretary. secretary. It's mm -hmm. correct. Are you sure? So the first part is correct, but take a look after uh, it. Uh, uh, if she can, uh, if she can. Correct up to if, here. If she can be, uh -huh, after can, uh, must be, uh, if she can be a full-time secretary. Excellent job. Good job. Because after can, we need base form verbs. Okay? You cannot even use has. You can't. Because this has is not like, you know, it's a present perfect or anything of that kind. We After can, we only have base form verbs. And after can, we're not going to, there is no has. All right? There is what? Base form. All right? And base form here is not has. All right? Yeah. So she can probably, uh, can you say can she, she can have a full-time secretary? So she will work yes, on doctor. the project only if she can have a full-time secretary. She will, but what did you say? She can what? Dr. Salam, you said she can what? She's what? a B, doctor. She can be? She say B, B. 
but that's not wrong by the way if she says yeah. she, if she can be it's like the sentence is correct but i mean uh she changed the verb but can you say she can okay. have so it seems that this is someone who, yes. who let me say is like an owner of a project or a company you know someone who has power all right and they're working on a project but she needs a lot of help and she probably you know uh, needs a secretary to help her, you know, manage, let me say, the paperwork. So can we say that she will work on the project if she can have a full-time secretary? Yeah, because have is also base form, by the way. It's a kind of verb that is base form, all right? Have is the base form of has and had, if you think about it, okay? All right, so it's, it's all right, correct in that way. Got it, Dr. Salam? So what you said is not wrong. But I gave you a better way of uh, responding to this, okay? Okay. Usually with my students, guys, generally all my students, even TOEFL students or younger students, let me say, um, uh, you know, like I have always been teaching BA, PhD, MA students, even, you know, PA, people who have PhDs, I mean, PhD graduates, you know, professors, all right, because I do TOEFL. That's why. And that's a course that even, let me say, people who want to apply for a job, let me say, uh, you know, often take the TOEFL. So um, uh, I don't mind, uh, let me say, uh, giving the students the grade, even if they correct in the way that the book does, you know, let me say, does not require as long because the goal is to teach you English and to use English correctly. I mean, if you have used the sentence correctly, then that's the purpose, really, <laughs> because at the end of the day, what's the goal of the TOEFL to better your English, to use English as correct as possible, to understand spoken, written language, let me say in English. And if that's happening, then why should I be so picky and say this is wrong? All right. But I can show you what's a better alternative, let me say, and show you what the TOEFL prefers, the TOEFL book, I mean, prefers. But I mean, anything that I can, that you do correct, I'm going to consider it correct. I'm not going to be against you. Okay. Um, all right. Let's move on to the next skill, guys. We have to move a little faster. There's skill 33. Know when to use the past with the present. Now, I hope, guys, you don't have a problem with this. All right. But, you know, some people mix a little bit of this. All right. Um, when do we use the past with the present, guys? Because, listen, the thing is about this part is that so many people don't know you, how, when to use the past, when to use the present, all right? If you want to tell me about your day so far, what do you use, the past or the present? Your day so far. You should use the past. This morning, I woke up at probably 6 o'clock. I took my kids to school. I went to work, I taught like three classes, um, I made like some kind of lunch, and then after that, see, look at the verbs that I'm using. I'm using like past simple verbs, okay? But when do we use the past with the present? Are there cases when we can use in the same sentence, past and present? Okay? All right, we'll see. Let's think about this a little bit. So there are certain cases, not like all the time, guys, where we can use the past with the present. Let's just try to understand the sentences. And I think the sentences are going to be, you know, let me say, um, you know, our eye openers, let me say, okay? So know when to use the past with the present. One verb tense problem that is common, both in student writing. Uh, guys, I suffer from this when I teach my students writing all the time, okay? Uh, I mean, like, they, they use the past, the present in a very messy way, okay? But my advice, guys, is that if you are telling a story, um, it's better to use the past. Um, but can you use the present sometimes if you're telling a story? Something that happened. You can. Do you know why? Because stories are like, Sometimes, you know, mostly if you're telling a story about like, a, you know, like a story about uh, something that you read in, in a novel, part of a story, let me say from a novel or from a movie, um, you watch the movie and you say, oh, the girl, you know, in the movie, she drinks coffee, then somebody follows her. Listen, it happened. huh? So she drank coffee. Someone followed her. The why did I say she in the movie, you know, she drinks coffee. And then someone follows her and then, you know, some some kind of enemy attacks her. See, I'm using present, although this is a movie that I watched. 
So why is it acceptable? It is acceptable, by the way. You can do that. You know why? Because this is a movie that everybody watches. You know, they've watched it five years ago, 10 years ago. They'll continue, you know, new generations will watch it maybe five years from now, you know. So you deal with it as if it's like a fact of life or something of, the life, of that kind. You deal with it as if it's a picture, you know. Sometimes you have a picture. Hmm? You have a picture and you hold it and you show it to people. Look at me in the picture. I am drinking coffee. Listen, it happened like 15 years ago. The pic What's in the picture? But we do that even in Arabic, guys. In the picture, as if you're holding it in front of people and you're describing it, all right? The picture now at the moment and the movie is, this in the same, is treated in the same way. But I want to tell you something. It's always good to be consistent. If you're going to use the past, use the past. I mean, continue to use the past as much as possible. If you're going to use the present, I mean, it would be better just to continue to use the present and not to keep switching between present and past. But there are, this is the skill. The skill says there are cases when in the same sentence you might have one of the verbs in the present and the other in the past. When does that happen? Let's take a look, guys. I want you just to understand these sentences because I'm not going to really, you know, provide you with sentences that will just mess you up, okay? I want you to understand these. If you understand them, I'm going to provide you with sentences that look like them, okay? So let's take a look again. Uh, the switch from the past tense to the present tense for no particular reason, of course, is not acceptable, guys. You know that. Often when a sentence has both a past tense and a present tense, the sentence is incorrect. See, guys, most of the time, it's incorrect. We want to know the times when it's going to be correct. This is what we want to know here in this skill, okay? So he took the money when he wants it. He took the money when he wants it. This is wrong, totally wrong. He took the money when he wanted it. I'm talking about someone who took money from his dad. And when he took his this money from his dad, he took it because what? He wants it? No, because he wanted it at that time, okay? In the past, whenever that time happened, all right? So this is used wrong. This is this is past, this is present, but this is not acceptable. They don't, you know, uh, let me say correlate. They don't go together, okay? Let's take a look at the uh, paragraph that follows. It says here, this sentence says that he took the money in the past when he wants it is in the present. This meaning does not make any sense. It is impossible to do something in the past as a result of something you want in the present. Of course, this sentence can be corrected in several ways. How can we correct this? I think I corrected it and let's see what they have, you know, uh, done also. So he took the money when he wanted it. Look what they did too. They use it in the present. He takes the money when he wants it. Yes, of course, you can tell your children something like that if you're married and you have children, huh? Or if your dad tells you something like that, you know, whenever, uh, let me say, you want some money, take it, all right? Or you can take it. So if I want to describe you, you describe you in the way that you take money from, let me say your, let me say wallet or your purse. So what do you do? You you not only take it, but you use it. So you, you take the money whenever or when, when it means whenever, it means the same, by the way, when you want it. If you want to describe your brother, you say he takes the money whenever or when he wants it. When he wants it means when he needs it and he needs it, you know, to buy let me say groceries um, to let me say buy different demands and needs, right? Yeah. So this is a habit. We take money from our wallets, from our bank accounts, whenever we what need the money. Need means want the money, guys. We want it because we need it. You know that. It's really the same. So um, here we have, look, guys, same tenses, past, past, present, present. So we still are not talking about the skill yet. Let's see when they will begin to talk about the skill, okay? So the first example means that he took the money in the past when he wanted it in the past. This is what the sentence means. This meaning is logical, of course, and the sentence is correct. The second example means that he takes the money habitually. Habitually means like this is his habit, you know? Every other day, guys, if not every day, you know, we spend money. Why? To buy different, let me say, groceries, you know, th dem our demands, right? You know, the things that we need, I mean. Um, when he wants it, that's habitually because we always want, you know, money to get, you know, our, let me say, uh, groceries and things that we daily need or something of that kind. So this meaning is also logical. And the second example is also correct. Let's see when we're going to be using the mix of the two tenses, let me say. So let's enlarge this a little bit and take a look at the sentences now that we have over here. Hopefully we have something new. All right. It is necessary to point out, however, 
that it is possible for a logical sentence in English to have both the past and the present tense. Let's see. Look at this example. I know. Aha. Uh -huh. I know. So no. Huh? Do you know something about the past? See when you can use that? What do you think, guys? Do you agree? I know that. We agree to yeah. So now, do you know? In this case, you can use a verb in the present, you know, with, uh, let me say, the past. past. So there's a, this is, what I want to ask you, Dr. Um, Sahar, that the money yesterday, what is this? We took this in the past, this kind of structure. This is a that clause. What do we consider? This, that clause is an... Present, past, uh, doctor. Listen to me. Listen to me, Dr. Sahar. This yes. clause, which is that, it's called the that clause because it begins with that. There's he, subject, took, the money, object, yesterday time expression. I know, subject, verb, that clause, which means all of this together. What does this function for know, for I know? Raise your voice if you know and tell me. I know. You or anybody. Tell me what this that clause functions for I know. For I know. I is subject. No is verb. What is that he took the money yesterday? What is this? All of it together. Object. What is uh, object. Yes, no, it's an no, object. object. Of course object. it's an object. No, no. Yes. It's an object, object yes. for I know. Yes. Okay. Yes. And look at any clause in the world, you know, that had that begins with that or any other connector. It has to be followed by a subject. Here is a subject, a new subject, I mean, not this one. And it has a verb. It has another object over here that, you know, as part of its contents. And there's a time expression, which is yesterday. Okay. So anyway, back to our sentence. It's a sentence that has two clauses, doesn't it, right? Two clauses? It does. Okay. So yes. once you have a connector like this, guys, you have to know that there's two clauses no matter what. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, do we use such sentences? I know what you did last summer. Do you know this? I know what you did last summer. Did you ever hear of this sentence? I know what you did last summer. Does this remind you of something? It's a movie. Excellent. Amazing job. Thank you for keeping up. All right. So I know what you did. Last summer is the name of a movie, and it's a sentence that has two clauses at the same time. And why did I mention this sentence, which is the title of a movie? Because I know what you did has I know, which is present, and then what you did is also past. Did is like took here, past, okay? So we have a sentence here that has two verbs, one in the present uh, and one in the past. By the way, you don't have to say I know, huh? I see what he meant, you can say. I see what he meant. I see does not mean see, it means I understand. Because sometimes we use see to mean I understand, all right, in English. I see what you meant or I see what he meant. So these are other cases. Do you guys agree that it's okay to use I know and I see as present and then that you follow it by a, a clause where there's a verb in the past? Is this fine? Do you feel it's fine? What do you think? Just yes or no? I don't want more than fine, that. Doctor. Fine, doctor. Fine. Yes, yeah. fine, doctor. Fine. I just want you to understand fine. so you feel comfortable with it. That's what I want. That's all. All right? Because, you know, listen, guys, we practice English, but we don't think about sometimes, you know, the things that we say. So TOEFL is like, you know, is a good chance to get you to think about the sentences that you say sometimes to understand what you're saying, really. OK, sometimes it's good to understand, you know, what you say, not only just say it, you know, without thinking about the structures that you're creating and, you know, got it. Um, and yes. Intentionally, I mean, like learning a language in a way. In, in, in that kind of way is really great, I mean, but still it's good sometimes to, to, you know, like to pause and think about your structures, right? The meaning of this sentence is logical. We're talking about this sentence, I know, right? I know right now, it means in the present, that he took the money when yesterday, which is in the past. You can see from this example that it is possible for an English sentence to have both the past and the present, in, you know, tense. It is possible, all right? The error you need to avoid, what is the error? The error means the mistake, right? Is to switch from the, from past to the present for no particular reason. So some people, they, um, you know, switch from past to present without any particular reason. I'll tell you how this happens. So sometimes I tell my students to write paragraphs 
and to write essays about certain things. And suddenly I, I, I'm like really shocked. Oh my gosh, you've been using the past all along. What, why did you change into the present? And there's no, no reason, I mean like convincing reason why the student moved from the past to the present, I mean. They're just telling a story. Suddenly it's in the, part of it is in the past, other past, the other part is in the present for no reason, you know. They just forget that they're using the past, all right? Um, and they start switching between present and past, and that is totally wrong. Therefore, when you see a sentence on the TOEFL test with both the past and the present, so what's, what are you supposed to do? Think very well about the sentence and its meaning, all right? Before you decide it's wrong if you see past and present together in the same sentence, okay? M most of the times, it's wrong. Most of the times, it is wrong to have past and present. Only in some cases, you have to think about the words very well and what they mean, and then decide that it's correct or not. So you really have to understand the meaning of the sentence to be able to judge, you know, let me say whether it's right or wrong. So you must check, see, they even say here, look, you must check the meaning of the sentence carefully. So this is not an easy skill, Dr. Mahmoud. Okay, but it's not hard. It's not impossible to see if, the, if it is logical in English, okay? So the following chart outlines the use of the past tense with the present tense, et cetera, or the, uh, yeah. So if you see a sentence with one verb in the past and one verb in the present, the sentence is probably incorrect, like 50-50. However, it is possible for a correct sentence to have both past and present together. So you might have sentences just like this one where there's a verb in the present and another what in the past. It's possible. It's not like impossible, you know? All right, that's something. I'm trying to, you know, let me say, um, move this a little bit. Then let's, um, okay, move here. And then we have the last part of this, you know, let me say table is that if you see the past and the present together, you must check the meaning to determine whether or not the sentence is correct. How can you learn whether the sentence is correct or not? You really have to understand the sentence, get to understand it. And, you know, through the meaning, you know, you can decide whether this is right or wrong. Now we want to take a look at these sentences here. Hmm? And it says here that each of the following sentences has at least one verb in the past and one verb in the present. So we want to see, are these used correctly or not? Underline the verbs twice and decide if the meanings are logical. So find the verbs first, underline them two times, and tell me whether the meaning, you know, works together, it's logical or not. Most I'm sure that most of them are going to be wrong, all right? Um, and let, tell me, like, if the sentence is correct or not. Dr. Mahmoud, go ahead. And listen, correct the sentence, please, for me. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, first of all, which one? Choose. Okay. Uh, to be honest, uh, I came lately in this skills because I'm, uh, I'm in the meeting. It's okay. With another meeting in the same right. time. But uh, I'm, I'm trying to... Uh, Do this and that. Understand. Do this and that. Okay, I will try. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I tell him the truth when he asked me the question the book says it's incorrect uh, i'm thinking why listen Dr. Mahmoud, think him, about the meaning yes huh? this is okay يعني انا اخبرت الحقيقه لما هو سالني yeah so اخبرته is not tell in english it's uh huh Told. I told him. Yeah, not tell him. So this is wrong. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Yeah. So I told him the truth when he asked me the, the question. So um, let me say someone this morning asked you something, all right? Uh, asked you about something that they don't know. And you say, like now, you said you, you're telling someone that you know. You know what? When the boss, when the head of the department asked me about somebody, I don't know who it is, all right? I told him the truth. I didn't lie. I told him the truth. We say that. Mm -hmm. So this is yes. wrong to say I tell him the truth. It's wrong. I told him. Yes, right. it's, it's somebody it about should be told. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, something that happened. So the, our lesson, Dr. Mahmoud, is about is it okay to use present with past in the sentence? Because sometimes it's okay, but in this sentence it's not. Okay. But uh, I should uh, focus on the meaning. Yeah, in order to understand that it's okay or not. Mm -hmm. We focus on the meaning and on how we use such sentences in our lives. Because if you read this, they will tell you, if you see the past and the present together, you must check what? 
the meaning to determine whether or not the mm -hmm. sentence is correct. This is like, there's no really, let me say, way besides you understanding the meaning of the sentence, all right? Yes, Dr. Badria, go ahead, choose. Thank you. So, okay, uh, sentence four. I want to answer sentence four, but uh, um, I want, tamam, sentence four, last semester. He read seven books and wrote five papers. This uh, sentence is incorrect because uh, yes, uh, uh, he talks about the past. So the verbs in the in this sentence is you must uh, use past. He uh, last semester he read or not read read in the past seven books and wrote read. five papers. Doctor Badria, in uh, at S. Yeah, when we read this word R E A D. Uh, and it's past. We don't read it, although the spelling of present and past looks the same. It's R E A D. But I mean, the past of read is red, not red, the color, red, red. Yes. not the color red. It's R E A D, red meaning the past of read. Read yakra, red qara. Red. And they have the same spelling, all right? Mm -hmm. All right, just to let you know. How do I know that we have to read it read and not read? Because there's last semester. You're saying yes. you're beginning. last semester means it yes, the past. you're telling me the past. In the past. Once you announce it and you say in the past, you have to use verbs that are in the past, all of them. So last semester, he accomplished certain things. He accomplished. Accomplished means enges. What did he accomplish? He read seven books and seven books. wrote five Okay, got it? Yes. So correct, but yes. just pay attention to pronunciation. Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Let's do... Uh, can, can, you answer, uh, can you answer question three? You. Of course, of course we can. Who, who wants to try it out first? And then we'll see if you can't work with it, we'll deal with it, all right? Dr. Shayma, can you work on three for us? Okay, sentence three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, when, he ha uh, when we was a child, he always goes to the uh, okay, crate. Circus. Circus. Circus is a circus. Oh. Okay. Okay, circus. Okay. Okay. That. Okay. Uh, the sentence is uh, not correct because uh, cause, uh, you should be uh, P won't, not go. Wind. Wind. Go. The past of go is wind. Go wind. Yes. And T. All right. And I'll tell you why some people think that this sentence is wrong or there's a bigger mistake in it because we always connect adverbs of frequency with the present simple. So some people will think because there's always, we have to have goes here. Because we do use, I mean, adverbs of frequency, like I always drink water in the morning. I always visit my mom, let me say, um, or I always water the plants. I always cook meals for my family, you know, we say that cook, you know, present simple, but it, listen to me guys, you can, you can also use always with past. Do you know why? Because you can talk about your childhood and the things that you used to do in a habitual manner in the past. So you can say something like when I was a child, dad always, always drove me to school when I was a child. I was a lucky child, you know. My dad was so amazing. You know, he always drove me to school. And you know what that means? If you say that dad always drove me to school, it means that dad used to drive you to school. That was his habit. Always drove means dad used to drive me to school. That's what it really means, okay? Because these are two ways to say the same thing, all right? But we know when we're kids, we're taught that always is always with present simple. Yeah, most of the times, but not always. What if you're talking about past habit? Like something that you did habitually, I mean frequently in the past, when you were in the first grade, when you were in the second grade, you know, something of that kind. So you can, all right? Yes, Dr. Mahmoud, you want to say something about this? No, no, just I want to... Not the idea? So when, we, when we teach guys, children, sometimes, you know, let me say the adverbs of frequency. Yes, I agree with you. It's a, sometimes it's a crime. We tell them that always is used with the present simple. You know, you always say, you say something like, I always go with my friends. I always go out with my friends. I always cook meals. 
I always practice my English. We say things like that with the present simple. It's wrong, but we do it. You know why? Because even I remember when I was a kid, when my teacher, my math teacher one time told me that, you know, if you do, if you say something like five, five minus six, you know, minus? Not us. No. Yeah. Salib, salib. Yeah. Six, you don't say five minus minus six. They used to tell us it doesn't work. Lay a Jews doesn't work. And then one day I was shocked when she told me minus one. Salib wahad. Were you shocked like me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I mean, we do this to children when we teach them because we want them to learn the basics first. And then when after they're done, they'll tell them, mm, we want to tell you something shocking, you know. We have taught you this, but there's something new now, okay? We want to mess up a little bit of what you, you know, learned a little bit, right? And this is just how teaching works sometimes. We don't want to, let me say, ruin their um, stable understanding of things because children, you know, they want, yeah, things to be stable and fixed in a certain way. Yeah. Okay, let's do another sentence, guys. Who would like to take a look at maybe um, eight, seven, nine, ten? Come on, we want to do two more. Uh, let's have Dr. Sahar. Ed. Yeah, which one, Dr. Sahar? Ed, doctor. Go ahead. Ed. He put some money in his account when he goes to the bank. We must uh, use here uh, went, not goes, because uh, the meaning of sentence, he put some money in his account. يعني هو حط نقود في حسابه عندما ذهب إلى البنك. المفروض الجملتين في الماضي. So it's good. Can, but can you say, but listen, listen. Can you say he puts some money in his account when he goes to the bank? Yes. Correct. So that's right and that's right. So it's like whenever he goes, he puts money in his account. I mean, this guy must be rich, you know. Like maybe he goes every day to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You can do both in the present and you can do both in the past. They're fine. Like you're, you know, it's fine. If you think about the meaning, they're both are okay. Dr. Mahmoud, do 10 for us and okay. then so we can move on to the next skill. Which one you want? 10. Because it's the last, not the least. Yeah, okay. She is where she is today because she worked hard when she was a student. She is where she is today because she worked hard. Uh, yes, correct, I think. Correct. Good. Yes. It's an excellent sentence, by the way. She is where yes. she is today. This is what, what it means. You know, she yeah, is in the position that she is in right now. You know. He yeah, because of something she did in the past. Yeah, yes. you know, the sentence means that she is successful, all right? She is successful. Do you know why? Because in the past, she worked very hard. That's what it means. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so it's fine, guys. We do things like that. We use the present. We describe somebody in the present, and we say that this is who he is now. This is his position now. It's because of a lot of hard work that he did in the past, of course. All right. So thank you so much. Yes, this is a good sentence in terms of meaning. And it's right. The way it's used is 100% right. We want to move on to skill 34. Thank you. Um, we have have and had. We know we want to use them correctly. Now, this is not a new skill again. All right. Now, this is something that is repeated. We talked about it. This is present perfect and past perfect. All right. This yes, is what okay. we're doing here. Okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, so... From the very beginning, this skill says that, you know, how to use have and how to use had correctly. But you have to understand that have and had sometimes are in the, you know, let me see, uh, say are used uh, as perfects and sometimes they are used as, you know, um, independent verbs. I don't know how they're going to use them now. Let's take it just a look and see. I think they're just going to focus on them in the perfect here, um, if I can remember, because, you know, um, let's just see what they have here. All right. Two tenses that are often confused are the present perfect. Look at the present perfect. It's have plus past participle. Of course, when we say have, it doesn't mean just have. It could be have or has, but they use have here because have is the base base form, guys. 
It's the base form of also has. يعني هي الشكل المجرد لـ have and has. Have. Okay? That's why we say that. And the past perfect, of course, past perfect only has one form. Had plus verb three. Okay? Past participle means verb three. What does past participle mean? Verb three, guys. You know that. We talked about past participle in earlier in earlier. Yes. These two tenses, so they're two different tenses, have completely different uses. Completely different uses. استخدامين تماماً, right? مختلفين. And you should understand how to differentiate them. Of course we should. Who can tell me the difference between the present perfect and the past perfect? In, in like, give me a sentence and let's just talk about, or look at these sentences and at least talk about them. For example, there's this sentence. Look at it. Sue has lived in Los Angeles for 10 years. So this is the present perfect used in the sentence. The present perfect is used in this sentence. All right, then we're, gonna, we're going to deal with another sentence that has later on past, perf past perfect, all right? Let's work on present perfect now. So the present perfect is made up of have or constructed of have plus verb three, past participle. And it refers to the period of time from the past until the present. So whenever we talk about, guys, the present perfect, we connect in a way the past with the present. Listen to me, present perfect. It's made of, look at it, have, and it's made of past participle. So verb three, so there is something past, guys. What is past? You have to ask yourself, what is the thing that happened here? Past means something that happened. And when we say, look at the word present, what's present? Why did we mix present with perfect? Present means present, al hadir And perfect means, guys, past participle, verb three. So something that happened. So how can we mix present with perfect? Present with past meaning. Okay, that's what it means, really. And in the same verb, I'll tell you how. Because usually when someone uses the present perfect, like in this sentence, they mean that something did happen in the past. So when I say Sue has lived, it means that, when did she live in Los Angeles? Sue has lived in Los Angeles. In the past. Does it mean that she still lives in Los Angeles? Maybe yes, maybe yes. no. Maybe yes, maybe no. Maybe she's still there. Maybe she's not. When I say she has lived in Los Angeles, maybe she lives in Jordan. When I say that Sue... Oh, not necessarily, in, it's uh, until imagine now. That, imagine that Sue is in Jordan. Uh, and then someone starts talking about Los Angeles. It's a beautiful country. It's in America. And I know Sue. So what will I tell the person who's speaking? I'll say, well, you don't have to tell Sue. Do you know why? Because Sue has lived in LA for 10 years. So this is what finished, guys? 10 years of living in LA. But maybe she will continue, to, like she'll go back, live more years because that's her place, you know, that's her, that's where her house is. But it also does not really tell me a lot about, you know, whether that person is going to return or not. Maybe it means that they just lived there for 10 years and those 10 years are done. And she's probably got, she got married to a Jordanian and she's, you know, she has come to Jordan with that Jordanian man um, who decided to come back to Jordan, to return to Jordan. Okay, so it doesn't really tell me that this person is going to return or not, or the person is there or not. It just tells me that what this person accomplished in terms of living is 10 years in that place, which is Los Angeles. Okay, it could mean, like I said, it could mean that they're going to continue to live more years there, or it could mean that, you know, this is the number of years that they lived in LA and probably they live somewhere else. Okay, let's see okay. what... Here, what is said here, guys. So what's the past? The past is that they lived it, They lived in LA for 10 years. Like maybe it's now two, 2023. Um, the first, you know, like they, they began living there, you know, in 20, what? 20 what? Because 10 years. 13, 2013. Yes. So they're in 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Uh, I don't know if I counted right. <laughs> but you got the idea, yes, right? Yes, you're right. Yes. You got the idea. All right. Yes. So that's what it means. But, but what's the present? Because there's present. A present perfect. There has to be something in the present. What's the present? The present is that this lady, Sue, 
uh, knows enough about LA more than you know more than than you know about LA. That's why when I told the man who was telling Sue, you know what, LA is a beautiful country. It's in America. I told him, well, why why are you telling Sue? Sue already knows this information. She has lived in LA for ten years. Why did I say this? Why look 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 at my questions? Why are you? Now, telling this to Sue, Sue has lived in L.A. for 10 years. She knows. Look, she look, look what I'm saying. She knows all this information. OK, this is the present. The present is that sometimes we do things, uh, things that we accomplished in the past. They create, let me say, some information in us now in the present part. It becomes part of who we are. That's the present. This lady has experience about L.A. She knows enough about L.A. than anybody else because she's she's lived there for 10 years. So she is experienced. And it could also be that she still lives there, too. It could be. That's part of the story. So when we say present perfect, OK, something happened in the past, but it, you know, let me say, has an impact on the present of the person, the life of the person right now. OK, so when I say, listen to, to me, guys, when I say I have eaten a sandwich today, a big sandwich, what am I saying about my present? So I have eaten a sandwich that's past. But what am I saying about my present? I think I'm full. And we use this, by the um, way. Stop. I, I, stop. I, we always say your mom tells you, your brother, your sister, your someone tells you, come and eat, come and eat. And you're like, no, I can't. You don't say, sometimes you don't say I can't even, because I can't means now I can't, all right? You're using like present. You might say something like, you know what? I ate a sandwich. No, no, not I ate. I have eaten a sandwich. I ate is wrong, by the way. When someone tells you, come and eat with me now, look, I prepared this beautiful meal for us. You're like, oh, sorry. I wish you told me I have already eaten. Because when you say I have already eaten, although this thing happened in the past, its impact is still on your body and your stomach. You're full right now. You can't have one more bite more. Got the idea? I mean, you can't have any more food now because you're you're not going to enjoy it, guys. You might throw up even, I mean. Sorry to say this. But... Let me let me say something in Arabic. Yeah, go ahead. يعني بالمختصر إذا كان بالماضي وإله تأثير على الحاضر على الوقت الحالي Present perfect. Use present perfect. Okay, not past simple. Yes, this okay? is the difference, yeah. Between yeah, that's, the... that's like one of the major, major differences, all right? Because, you know, that's, yes. you know, and lots of people have a problem with the present perfect because, like, it's called present perfect. Is it present or is it, then perfect is past. No, it's a past. It's a kind of past verb, by the way. It's not present. It's a past verb. That means you are talking about an action that happened in the past. The action, when did it happen? Here, like if you look at this, this is the action, live. When did it happen? Past. And maybe we say 10 years, like the first year, oh, deep past. Second year, oh, okay, er, you know, deep past, but a little bit closer to now. Three years, you know, deep past, but closer than two, and so on. Past, all right? All of us is in the past, I mean. But like I said, the goal behind using this is to have an imp to show that there's a there's an impact of the past on the present. Like how I use it right now. You know, so many students have a problem with the present perfect, okay? Because we don't have it in Arabic. We don't have yes, present doctor. perfect in Arabic. Okay, this is why. Because um, usually uh, people who learn a language want to have an equivalent in Arabic, Arabic or in their language. Like, what does it look like? What does it look like in our language? The, we doesn't. There is no equivalent for it in Arabic, but we can describe it in Arabic in a way, okay? Just describe it. We use ad. Well, yeah, I'm not going to get into Arabic because I don't know a lot of Arabic, okay? <laughs> In that kind of way. All right, so this sentence means that Sue, look, I'm going to explain it according to the writer of the TOEFL book. He says, this sentence means that Sue has lived in L.A., Los Angeles means L.A., for 10 years upon up to now. According to this sentence, Sue, maybe, is still living in L.A. Of course, like she says, he, she is still living. It doesn't have to be that she's living in L.A., okay? It could be that. Because we say this, guys. I have lived in Jordan for five years. How long have you been here in Jordan? How long have you lived in Jordan? Um, when someone says, I have lived in Jordan for five years, most of the times it doesn't mean they're going to move, but they just tell you about how long they lived in Jordan, right? 
um, or they have lived in Jordan, I mean. But it doesn't also it doesn't mean that they will live the next year or this year or the following. Who knows? Um, of course, but you know, as Jordanians, we like we're comfortable people. We like staying in the places that we live in forever, huh? Um, but I mean, like if you were American, it would be very hard to use this kind of sentence because Americans love moving from one state to another. Like if you talk to anybody who's from America, they'll tell you, oh, when I was young, I lived in this state. Like 10 years later, I was in another. I went to college in another state. Oh, when I did my MA, I went to California. Oh, for my PhD, I went to Oklahoma. So they move all over the, the you know, the states. I don't know why. Like all of them have went to at least like have gone, I'm sorry, to at least like 15 states, you know, 15 states is like 15 countries, right? Yeah. And they don't mind changing the states, you know, for us, it would be like really hard, you know, to do that because, you know, we're connected, you know, let me say in terms of family and friends, and we don't want those big thought changes a lot to happen. And if we do change, we return to our old routine, huh? Okay. So because the present perfect refers to a period of time from the past until the present, of course, when you say Sue has lived in LA for 10 years, like I said, we, I started by telling you guys, maybe uh, she began living there in uh, 2013 or 14, let me say, if I counted right. And um, now it's like, you know, let me say 2023, right? So if you want to count 10 years, all right? Until the present, it is not correct in a sentence that indicates past only. So it does not indicate past only. So there's also a connection when someone says 10 years, you know, to the present. At the start of the 19th century, look at this sentence. Let's look at this sentence and see what, you know, uh, we are required to learn from this sentence. Let's try to learn something here. So at the start of the 19th century, which means the beginning of the 19th century, Thomas Jefferson has become, what do you think? President of the United States. Guys, when we want to talk about historical facts, don't use present perfect. This is why there's a star here, or we call it an asterisk. When we want he to talk became... about historical issues, never use present perfect. Okay, use just past simple. Okay? And when we say something like this in the 19th century and we want to report incidents, just use past simple. So this is wrong, by the way. If you want to talk about a historical figure like Thomas Jefferson, so Thomas Jefferson was, I think, the second president of the United States of America. Um, And um, let me say... Uh, what did I just say? He was the second, was the second president. He, um, what else? He lived in the, uh, let me say early, I don't know, the start of 19th, is that Thomas Jefferson? Oh, I'm sorry. Thomas Jefferson lived in the 19th century. Yeah. I think I mixed between him and someone else, probably another Jefferson. But anyway, um, we don't use present perfect to talk about historical facts or historical issues. Okay. So we say, um, okay. let's say America probably colonized Iraq in when two thousand the year two thousand probably, or attacked Iraq. See, attacked. We don't say present perfect. What I'm saying is that historical issues, let me say, uh, are used in the past. We don't use present perfect with them. Okay? Do you all agree? Okay. Just to let you know. And every time Jim yeah. worked on his car, he has improved it. Every time Jim worked on his car, he improved it, guys. Okay, we don't use here present perfect as well. We talked about, listen, guys, present with the past, but we did not talk about, let me say, past with, um, let me say, present perfect in this kind of way. Listen, present perfect is always connected to uh, present results, but not to past, okay, guys, in this kind of way. Like, this is like the same sentence. We don't use present perfect with past in the same sentence, just to let you know, okay? This is a rule of thumb. I want you to always have this in your mind. Okay. Doctor. Present perfect with every same sentence, but present. past is not used. You can go yeah. for present perfect and what? Present Simple. perfect and what? Past. Yes. You can use present perfect and not past, present perfect and uh, and present. Because when you say something like, Simple present. Uh, yeah, when you say something like, I have, let me say, uh, written uh, a letter. Here it is. Look at it. Can you tell me um, if it's correct or not, if it's nice or not, if I should improve, you know, you can use present with it in that kind of way, but not past. Okay. 
because you have accomplished something and you want to talk about it now because it's done, it's ready, you can show it as evidence to people, okay? This is why we use present perfect, not in this kind of way. So this is wrong also. So uh, if we want to correct the sentence, we can say every time Jim worked on his car, there are some people who love working on their cars. They have a car and every day they're at the mechanic, you know, adding something, removing something, you know, doing something. Well, mainly those young guys, you know, I don't know. They add plaster, they remove plaster, they color it. They, I don't know, systems and stuff like that. Okay. So um, every time Jim worked on his car, he improved it. Maybe he's a mechanic also. Who knows? Okay, so you can't say has over here. So look at the asterisk. They're telling you it's wrong anyway. See, it's wrong. We corrected and I told you why. So guys, in the first example, the one about Thomas Jefferson, okay? The phrase at the start of the 19th century. See this this time, time let me say, a phrase at the start of the 19th century. When you say something like in the 19th century, in the 18th century, always use past simple. Indicates that the action of the verb was in the past only but the verb indicates the period of the time, like this verb that is used, uh, from the past until the present, which is wrong, of course, since this is illo not logical, the sentence is not correct. The verb in the first example should be what? Became, okay? So remove all this, and you say Thomas Jefferson became president, okay? One word, one verb. The logical, uh, not the, sorry, where am I? Um, so where are we? The second example now, I'm sorry, indicates that Jim worked on his car in the past, but he improved it in the period from the past until the present, okay, which is also wrong. This idea also is not logical. The verb in the second example should be the simple past improved, okay? Now we want to move on to the past perfect, guys. I think we I spoke to you about the past perfect before, right? And I told you that most of the times when we use the past perfect, it's because we want to create some kind of order. We want to create order. Like we want to talk about things that happened in the past, like more than one thing that happened in the past. And the, the incident that happened in the past, which is the older past, the deeper past, usually we use with it the past perfect, okay? And because okay. sometimes, sometimes the older uh, action um, resulted, or let me say, was the reason, the reason, not the result, was the reason why the next action, which is also in the past, but more recent past, you know, happened, okay? So look at this example. Let's take a look at this example. Okay. It says here that the past perfect, which is had, the structure of it is had, always had, with all subjects, guys. In the present perfect, we have has or have. Because I say, I have, right? We have you have, they have, I mean, in terms of structure, have eaten, have seen, all right? But I say, she has, he has, it has, all right? For example, she has seen or talked to her friend or something of that kind, and now knows that they have, that he or she has suffered a lot. See how I said, she knows that he has suffered a lot. She knows now, why? Because, you know, he has suffered a lot and he probably told her about that. Okay, so let's take a look at this, guys. The past perfect had plus past participle refers to a period. But with had, I want to say that all subjects are the same. I had, he had, we had, they had. All of them are the same. We don't change this, okay? Anyway, refers to a period of time that started in the past and, uh, and ended in the past before something else happened in the past too. All right, so something happened in the past, in the past, and then something else happened after that. That's what it means, guys. Sue had lived in Los Angeles for 10 years when she moved to San Diego. All right, let me show you this on, like, what this sentence means. Please memorize the sentence so that I can ask you to help me with the sentence in a few minutes. Did you memorize the sentence? Dr. Sahar always memorizes the sentences for me. Did you memorize the sentence? Uh, which, which sentences that we, we write it in the... The, the, last last, sentence, uh, the last sentence that, I just, that we just mentioned right now. We mentioned the sentence right now. I said she in had she had lived right in L.A. 14 uh, years. Huh? Good yes. job. I got it. <laughs> uh-huh. Did you come to I'm sorry. 
I know problem. She had <laughs> lived in LA for 10 years. Then what happened? What's the sentence, Dr. Sahar? I thought you memorized it. Did you memorize the sentence? <laughs> so this is skill what? Just make sure that, you know, we're not using anything wrong, all right? All right, so, sorry. Um, Here it is. So she had lived in LA for 10 years when she moved to San Diego. When she moved. Oh my gosh, what did I do? Another she, maybe that's why. What did I do? My computer is. <laughs> what do I have? I will share it right now. Just give me a minute. I'm typing the sentence right now. I'm going to share it with you. Share screen. Here we go. Okay, here is the sentence. Do you see it all, guys? Here it is. She had lived in LA for 10 years when she moved to San Diego. I want you to understand when I said something like, you know, a while ago, I said she had lived, you know, had lived means that she began to live in a place which is called LA for like a year, then another, then a third, and then it became 10 years, all right? And then like after that, after those 10 years, she moved. This is the this is in the past and this is in the past, but this is deeper, deeper past, okay? So let me show you this on the timeline. So what does this mean on the timeline? I think one time I drew it for you and I showed you, but you know, nothing's wrong if I show it again. Let me also highlight this to show you what this means. Like if this is a timeline, see, this is a timeline. Okay, now let's say this is the present. Now here we want to say past. Okay, so I'm going to say that this area, I'm sorry, what's going on? So here this is moved. She moved at this time. And over here, look, guys, huh? I'm going to say, what happened? Make this smaller. So had lived, it really means, guys, look, 10 from one to 10 years. So this is what it means. Had lived means that in the past, this is past also, but deeper past, deeper. See, deeper. Let's go deeper past. Okay. And we don't want to capitalize this. We're just going to do this. Let's make this small, a uh, shorter period so we can have just one line. So this is, guys, the timeline. Like, this is the present. So this is present. Let's say that this is all past over here, Okay. Now, this is like a year ago. This is two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, six years ago, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the more we go with numbers, 10, 11, 12, et cetera, we're going deeper in the past, right? Let's suppose that, you know, um, let me say this lady is speaking this sentence or saying this sentence, or we're talking about her right now. This sentence is like being said right now, which is the present. She had lived, maybe Sue, we're talking about Sue. Maybe Sue had lived in L.A. Huh? Why did I say had lived? Because I want to tell you that, you know, something else happened after that. So I'm talking about two past actions. One happened before the other. The one, the one that is older, that happened first, deserves to be used in the past perfect because it happened first. That's just why. All right. So this is why I use the past perfect to order my, you know, actions that happened in the past. And usually, um, you know, the, the past perfect, not always one of the reasons why we use the past perfect is also to show that, you know, it happened over a period of time. Like, you know, mostly living, guys. When you live in a place, you live in a place for time. So you show the time from two, from two, okay? So uh, from, from like the beginning of the period is deeper even 
than you know two. You know that because if it's ten years, then from is like ten years ago, and two is like you know let me say the last year, the last year that the person lived in the place, right? So anyway, all of this together, whether it's one one to ten years, you know, is described as the past together. All right, and it's used for it. We use the past perfect. All right, and the past perfect is structured with had and verb three. Now moved uh, is past. It's like something that happened in the past, but it's more recent than this, okay? So she moved to San Diego after, you know, you can also rephrase this sentence. You can say, she moved to San Diego after she had lived in LA for 10 years. So you can, you know, sentences could be said in different ways. Even in Arabic, we sometimes do this. We start like this by saying she had lived in LA for 10 years when she moved to uh, to a San Diego. No, she she moved to San Diego after she had lived in LA for 10 years. We, you know, we structure sentences in different ways. I just want to say that. All right. I just want you to understand that that whenever we have past perfect, it means you're tell you're announcing to the listener that I also did something else that is also in the past after it, which is let me say also uh, significant to me. Significant means like important also. Moving is not something you know that we have to you know let me say ignore because when you move to a place, you live in a place where you're surrounded by people from different places, different cultures. They impact you. They help you become the new person that you are. Right? Okay. So let's take a look, guys. Back, back, back to. Um, let's just go for. Don't save. No need. Right? And I want to share with you again the book. All right. Stop sharing that and let's share the book again all right you guys have a problem with this guys are we okay guys let's take a look at other okay. examples okay yes, doctor, it's okay. It's okay. let's it's look okay. at another example i'm not going to look at the explanation because i already used my explanation okay let's look at this example tom has finished the exam when the teacher <laughs> the problem once you use past Whenever you use past perfect, the other verb is what? Uh, past. Past. Past simple. No matter what. This is a rule. This is a rule, guys. You have to memorize it. This is why we use past perfect to say that something else happened also. But, you know, this one that is past perfect happened first. This is what you're saying really to the listener. Okay. So, and you're telling okay. them, when you say had finished, wait, 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 wait. I'm not done. I want to say something important. Okay. That I have not finished. It's like you're announcing to the listener that there's something else that is worthy of listening to that also happened, but let me say more recent and still passed also. Tom had finished the exam when the teacher collected the papers. Okay. Is this good or bad? Tom had finished the exam when the teacher collected the papers. What if my sentence was Tom had not finished the exam when the teacher collected the papers? It's not, it's not something good. If Tom is my son, my brother, I'm going to be really sad because Tom, you know, let me say, you know, let me say, did not finish answering the questions, let me say, and did not work with time, right? Got the idea? Right. Yes. Guys, let's move. Present perfect, have plus past participle, passed up to now, that's the present perfect, okay? Not with a past tense. We don't use with it a past, past tense like like 1986, in 1986 or last year or something of that kind. Past perfect, had plus past participle. When do we use it? Before past, up to the past. Look, past, up to the past. That means deep past. Okay? And this is deep, but, you know, more recent. Okay? Not with present tense. Be careful, guys. Always with past. Okay? Like the other verb. And, of course, guys, if you would like to... Uh, you know, let me say, learn all about sense because sense, let me say, is among the uh, expressions that are used with the perfects. Go ahead and go to, um, there's a skill called skill 35. We will work on it soon. That ha that focuses on sense a lot. How many skills have we covered today so far? Three skills. Okay, good. good. We're doing well. We're doing amazing because we have to move on to the reading now. Okay, so we have the exercises now. Let's take a look at them. I hope you guys, you understood how to use now, you know, the present perfect better and the past perfect better. Have you noticed that now you're a little bit stronger with the way that you use the present perfect and the past perfect now? 
Have you understood? Yes, how, yeah, that, you know, like what's really the goal of using the present perfect and the past perfect? So we don't have these tenses in Arabic. We don't have the present perfect and we don't have the past perfect in Arabic. But you must understand what they mean in Arabic to make it like easier for you to use them. Okay. So each okay. of the sentences contains had or have, underline the verbs twice and decide if the meanings are logical and indicate if the sentences are correct or incorrect. We're going to take three sentences because we really have to move to the reading. We're going to do probably three, then probably six or seven, then 10. Yalla, guys. Who wants to do three? These are already done, so we're going to leave them on, on the side. Let me say three. Who wants to do three, Dr. Sahar? Uh, the student... Uh, have registered for class before the semester started. We must use here uh, 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 had registered, past perfect because the, the the started because yeah, we, yeah because we have you know let me bar. say yeah started as the past so good job past perfect and, and listen guys uh, this always happens you know. Uh, even after exams, like now we are, you know, let me say during this, the first semester, right? Dr. Mahmoud, you teach at the Faculty of Arts, you know, you know that. I don't know who also works here at Yarmouk. But I think all of you guys, if you teach at other universities, you know that what happens is that during this semester, after maybe the final exam, students or the final exams, students are told to register huh, tasjid, for the second semester. Right. Yes. So basically what happens first is that students register first and then the semester starts, which is the second semester. Right. So that's why this happens first. Had registered, not have registered. And then this is past the semester started. Right. So we're talking about here like last semester. We're talking about last semester, maybe like in Fasl Dani guys last year. OK, so the students had registered for classes before the semester started or we're talking about this semester, guys, but maybe in the, su uh, the summertime. OK, so, yeah, that's uh, that, that's okay. Okay. Shema, Dr. Shema, go ahead, please. OK, uh, anyone? Doctor? Yeah, go ahead. It's you. Choose six, seven, eight. Which one do you want? Anyone? A eight. OK, okay. Uh, after the po uh, after the boat. A uh, work uh, can connected, yeah. Count, con count, con okay. count. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know, votes to heal aswat, guys. Imagine that you have like um, oh. let's say some kind of yeah voting going on. Uh huh. It, it had been determined that Steve uh, was the winner. Uh, surely incorrect because the the uh, where is. Uh, not correct, you should be a uh, had been, not where. Also, a uh, had been should be a uh, was. Why? Can you 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 Well, we're thinking about this now here, Dr. Shema. It had been determined oh. that Steve, look, this is the past also, was the winner. So this is determined. And then, then there's what? The winner. Uh, this is like afterwards. Yes. Because you count when you determine something, it's like you're counting. Okay. So this is like after the votes were counted, this is like a different, this is like a, a clause by itself. After the votes were counted, there nothing's wrong with this, Dr. Shema. After the votes oh, were okay. counted, all right? This is like a different a clause by itself because there's after to connect them, okay? Then this is like a new clause, okay? Uh, and there's a comma even like to disconnect them. It had been yes. determined because this happened first. Yes. And then we announced the winner. We announced the winner next. So this is the past. This is past perfect. What's wrong with it? Nothing's wrong. It's fine. Not it's correct. Yeah. Because, but this is passive form. Do you know why? Because it had been determined by maybe the committee, the committee, min legend. They just don't tell you who did it. It's like passive style. But nothing's wrong with it. Because to determine something means you count, you organize, you collect, you, you know, works, you do some kind of work 
to decide. This is what it means. So of course this happened first. Then the announcement of the winner is next, right? So this happened first, which is past perfect. This happened next, which is past simple. It's fine. Nothing's wrong with it. It's not an easy sentence. I mean, you need to think about it a little bit, but it's correct. Nothing's wrong with it. I hope you guys agree with me. Let's take a look at either nine or 10. Who wants to do nine or 10? Choose. I don't really care. I'm not even looking at the sentences. So nine or 10 is fine. You take a look and tell me what you have decided. So Dr. Sahar, go ahead. Uh, 10, doctor. He had the fast, fast, uh, fast Passage. tense. Uh, his T, T, belt, Dr. Sahar. Belt. T oh. is silent. Ignore T. In English, there are sometimes some letters that are silent, and this T is silent. Fastened. Fastened. Okay? Fastened. Yeah. He had fastened. Yeah. His seat belt before the airplane took off. Uh, took is uh, the bus who had fastened is the bus perfect. It's correct. What bus with bus perfect? One hundred. He had fastened his seat belt. You know, you know, you guys. I think most of you have been on planes, if not all of you. If you, you know, when you sit on the seat, let me say, when you sit in your seat, I mean, in the plane. Uh, the uh, you know flight attendant tells you to fasten your seat belts to get ready for takeoff. Takeoff is next, not first. This is first. So we're talking about someone who uh, you know, let me say, traveled by plane sometime in the past. We don't know when, maybe a week ago, a year ago. I don't know. So for the first thing he did was that he had fastened his seat belt, and of course, this happened before. It's first before the plane, of course, took off. Took off is the past of takeoff. So it's fine. Past perfect, first, second, you know, and there's the connector before between these, you know, clauses and things are amazing and things are really great. Okay. So nothing's wrong. And we have finished the three skills here. We need to move on guys to our fourth skill for today, which is a reading skill so that I can give you a break from me. All right. What's the page number guys that we want to go to right now? Do you remember? We should ask Sahar, I think. 294. Skill 10. Skill 10, 294. Okay, but I want to listen to someone who wants to speak a little bit. Yes, Doctor, we can turn around to the now. Yeah. Remind me of the page number, though. Okay. I think it's what? Which skill? 34. 34. Yeah. Oh, we talked about this. Okay. Oh, but I was thinking about the sentence. I was thinking that after the votes had been counted, it, were, uh, oh, it was determined that Steve was the winner. Yeah. It had been determined. He decided that the votes had been counted. And eventually, yeah, you, you, can, you can listen. You can think about counted. it in that kind of way. You can think about it in that kind of way. Like after the votes had been counted, you know, it was determined that Steve was the winner. It's very, you listen to me. It's very redundant oh, if you say it was determined that Steve was the winner. Look how, you know, it's not that nice. It how it was determined that Steve was the winner. Like it was was. See how was was is not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, if you can think about this as 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 a side, let me say, think after the votes were counted. You know, after the votes were counted, like put it aside because it's a clause by itself. Let me say, and then you think about these two together. All right, these two together. You can also it would feel like better even on the ear. All right, that. It had been determined huh, that Steve was the winner is also fine. If you really think about it, think about it well. Like, because you know what? Determining means like counting votes even, all right? That like you have made the decision uh, because based on the counting of votes. Based So this happened also before this, you know? So I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that this is past perfect and this is also past simple. Mm-hmm. I don't really see it wrong, you know, if you also say after the votes had been counted, you know, let me say it was determined, uh, let me say, or Steve was determined a winner. 
I think the sentence would be more acceptable. It was determined, huh? Uh, let me say, um, or uh, or Steve was determined a winner. It would be better. But the was was two times is kind of like. Did you hear my answer the second time? What I said, like, yeah. uh, Steve was determined a winner. That would be good, I would say, where you had here past perfect, and then you made like this one good clause, let me say, attached to this. It would sound a lot better, okay? But because when you say something like, you know, after the votes had been counted, it was determined that Steve was, see? It's like, you know, was, was. It's like it's not even, you know, comfortable on the ear, okay? So I don't know if you can, like, think about this because listen to me. Um, who's talking to me? Just to check. Who's talking to me? Dr. Gaida? Dr. Gaida, are, are you the one who's talking to me, right? Yes. Yeah, because the goal, the goal, Dr. Gaida, is really, um, you know, what you're saying is something, let me say, convincing in a way, because what you're telling me is this happened first, right? And then this happened next, which is true, 100%. But like I said, it's like, you know, very separated, counted, then determined, then what, you know, like uh, decided, you know, or was winner. All right. So there are like, you know, three verbs here that make, uh, let me say, you know, like a kind of uh, redundancy to the sentence. OK, when if you if we're going to follow what you say and leave this the way it is. So my solution, OK, to let me say, um, uh, agree with you, but also work with the sentence and the, the meaning of the sentence is to say something like, you know, either leave this the way it is and work on this to show past perfect and past simple, okay? Or you can use this, as you said, you can think about this as past perfect here by saying that the after the voters had, been, after the votes had been counted, um, uh, Steve, uh, let me say, what did I say? Uh, let me say, was determined, uh, you know, uh, as winner, let me say, okay, something like that, where I don't want to say like 100, you know, was is okay. But uh, I mean, like, um, we all agree that a first action, if there are two actions, the first action is in the deeper past, which is past perfect. And the one that follows is past simple. Even the one that follows after it, like you said, could be past. But I mean, there's redundancy with was and was again. You see, that's what I'm saying. So I hope you understand my point. And we agree on the same thing, which is, you know, an action that happened in a deeper past is past perfect. One more recent, but past is, pres is past simple. Okay. So like I said, um, uh, sometimes, you know, these books are not always perfect. You know, Dr. Gaida, it's not like it's a TOEFL book. It's not uh, the Quran. It's not sacred, you know. There might be, you know, situations where like a sentence is not thought of very well or thought about, you know, because we don't use sentences in that kind of way, I mean. But since me and you and all of us share something in common, which we know that the past perfect has to refer to the deeper past of an action, <laughs> the one that follows is kind of like a result, you know, to it, sometimes it's a result, sometimes it's not. It's just an action that happened afterwards in the uh, more recent past, okay? I don't know what the book says in terms of the answer. What does the book say, Dr. Gaida? I didn't look at the answers, by the way. I don't know. It's been a while that I have not looked at the answers, all right? So the, what does the book say, though? If you checked. Do you know? He said they will check it. In the hmm. chat. All right. Yeah. So the, the most important good. thing, like I said, is that we understand like how these things are used. All right. Can you give me the page number of the um let me see the reading skill? Maybe we two, can two hundred two hundred and ninety-four skill ten. All right, we'll try to move two hundred ninety-four. Yeah, we have to work on our last what uh, two hundred and ninety-four. I'm glad Dr. Sahar, you're, you're updating us. Skill ten. Yeah, we'll try our skill best. Ten. You know, to work on the skill quickly, okay? So here we go. Let's just enlarge this a little bit. Um, okay. 294, you said? Yeah. Ah, uh, 94, skill 10. Yeah, I can see. Use context to determine meanings of difficult words. Yes. We're still talking about meanings of words. So this is the third skill about meanings uh, or meaning of difficult words, all right? So here we have used the context to determine the meanings of difficult words on 
the TOEFL test, you will sometimes be asked to determine the meaning of a difficult word, a word that you are not expected to know. In this case, the passage will give you a clear indication of what the word means. So guys, sometimes you would be, you might read, let me say a passage about, you know, a topic and there would be, you know, let me say words, diction, you know, let me say that is strange to you that you don't, that you don't commonly listen to or know the meaning of. And um, even if you're American, you might not know, by the way, you might, because these are words that are used in a certain, let me say, field or like, uh, I'm sure, guys, I might let me say something, uh, say something like uh, oxymoron. You know what oxymoron means? Do you know what that means? Do you know what hyperbole means? Do you know what that means? Do you know what simile means? Do you know any of those meanings? Guys, tell me. Do you know what personification? No, honestly. Personification. No, this is the first time. Let me tell you why you don't know the meanings of these words, because these are terms that I use and my students use in literature, in English literature. We don't use it when we talk to our family members and when I talk to you here in TOEFL, okay? We use these words when we want to analyze a poem. We use these words when we want to analyze uh, uh, you know, a short story or a novel or a piece of drama, okay? So people who do not study literature in English or English literature would not know the meanings of these words. And before my students know these words, okay, and use them, let me say, and apply them, first of all, I teach them what they mean, okay? I teach them what they mean. And I teach them how to use them when they want to, let me say, analyze or apply them to a piece of literature, all right? And now they know. All right. But it, it took me like, you know, a whole semester to teach them. It's like the ABCs to teach them that. OK, because if they don't know them, they're tools. They won't be able to analyze, you know, literature. OK, in English, let me say. Got it. And in Arabic, by the way, these words that I just used, you know what they are in Arabic? Al-Mubalagha, al Yes, these are this is what they are in Arabic. Okay. All right. Um, things like that. So these are words, but in English, not in Arabic, guys. Okay. They have you know specific wording to them, you know, and so on. Anyway, what I want to say is that you know, you might read a passage that you know there, there's a word, although you are an, an English speaker, you might not know the word because it's not like an everyday word. Look at this, guys. The barges headed across the lake. Now, I never heard of the word barges. Me too. I never heard of it. I heard of it, I mean, because I read, I studied the TOEFL book. I mean, but before that, I never heard of it. And I, I teach literature, okay? So um, what does that mean? The barges headed across the lake. I knew what it meant. Do you know why? Because across the lake, um, is this an animal that swims in a lake? Is this, you know, let me say, uh, uh, some kind of boat but read, it's only this. It's either a boat oh. or an animal that swims, let me say, a sea animal. Because, you know, headed across the lake, then across, across. So it's not an animal anymore. Across, it's like, you know, like a, some kind of a ship or a canoe. So read, a barge is probably which of the following? So from the context, what do you mean by context? Like, I mean, the rest of the sentence. The context is the rest of the sentence, where you can find the word in which, in the sentence, in the paragraph, like try to understand the paragraph and what it's saying. Is a barge a train or, you know, or a plane or a bicycle or a boat? What's the closest in meaning, guys? Come on. You tell me. In the lake. In a lake. Across a lake. Because they, yeah, cause but they underline. Know, listen. If you don't know what lake is, that's problematic, honestly speaking. Right? Yes. From the meaning. Yeah. Because lake, you have to know what a river is, what a lake is, what a lake is. Right? Yeah. So sometimes there are some basics that you have to revise also. It's a good idea to do that. So what is it? What's the answer again? That it's a boat, right? So in this type of question, you are not expected to know the meaning of the word bar. See, you're not expected. They don't expect you to know it. Yes, siyak. Really. That means the sentence that it is in, that, that this word is in. Instead, you should understand from the context that if the barges went across a lake, then it is probably a type of boat. Answer D, which is, you know, the word boat, is therefore the best answer. The following chart, 
with chart this one outlines the key information that you should remember about vocabulary questions, okay? Uh, containing difficult words. So let's take a look. Let me enlarge this because it's not that clear, okay? And let's see what it says here. So keep these uh, these ideas in mind whenever you want to uh, try to like understand, try to understand the meaning of a difficult word. How to identify this kind of question? They might ask you, what is the meaning of this word? Which of the following is closest in meaning? They will give you different options. Which one is the closest in meaning? Or they will ask you the word is a the, the word is a difficult word, one that probably uh, that you probably do not know. Well, it's not part of the question, right? So they're just telling you information that sometimes the word is difficult and you don't know it. Where to find the answer? Where can you find the answer? Of course, in the context. What does context mean? Like the sentence that you find the word in. And if you don't understand it still, from the yeah. end, go ahead and, yeah. oh, no. you know, yes, the paragraph itself and try to understand what the paragraph is about. The question usually tells you in which line, sometimes they tell you you're going to find the answer in line two, line three. Sometimes they do that in the TOEFL, by the way. Uh, the word can be found, etc. So how to answer the question? What do you do, guys? Okay, I want to try to answer the question. I find the word in the passage. Then I read the sentence that contains the word carefully. Then I look for context clues. Like, for example, remember the word lake? Lake is like part of the context. The barges, you know, and then across the lake, you know, um, to help you understand the meaning. And then choose the answer that the context uh, indicates, right? So we have an example here. I don't know. I love this example, guys. Let's take a look at it together. This is the last thing that we're going to work on together. Maybe it will take just 10 minutes <laughs> from us and then I'll let you guys go. The Black Widow. What's the Black Widow? It's a kind of... What? Insect? Spider. Scorpio? Spider. Uh, spider, yes. Uh, spider. Right? The Black Widow. I'm sure all of you have heard about the Black Widow before. Widow means armale. Black, come on, you know what that means. And I think all of you have heard about this widow before. Why is she a widow? Why is this spider a widow? Let's see why. So the black widow is the most dangerous spider living in the United States of America or United States. Uh -huh, it's dangerous because it can kill you. Yes, it is most common in the southern parts of the country. So where in America? Not north, the southern, like maybe Arizona, Texas, Oklahoma, those states in the in the north, in the south. I'm sorry. Oh, my gosh. In the south, maybe Florida, because Florida is also in the south. So the black widow. Oh, OK, but it can be found throughout the country, but it's not just in the uh, south. It's all over the country, too, but mainly there. The black widow got its name because the female has been known to kill the male after mating. And like on the day of the wedding, guys, huh? As if there's a wedding. Um, and as a result, becomes a widow. So they only meet, they have one encounter uh, where they get married, all right? And then the female spider kills the male spider. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> so that's, that's what... <laughs> Yeah, that's why she's that the black widow. <laughs> okay. Um, I had a... <laughs> yeah, as a result, becomes a widow, of course. The black widow is rather distinctive in appearance. It's unique in appearance. It has a shiny, it's shiny, shiny, like the sun. Globular body, globular like means like a circle, like a globe, like a globe, you know, okay? The size and shape of a pea. A pea is a habit bazella, guys. The shape and the size of a pea. Um, and is marked on its underbelly. Underbelly is like stomach, okay? With a red or yellow spot. So what is on the stomach of the uh, spider? A yellow spot. Like the Indians have a red spot here? No, no, no. Now, the, the, the black widow has a spot on the stomach. <laughs> but and it's yellow, not red. So the female is considerably more ample than the male. Um, the you know the the female is like not skinnier. The female is bigger, larger, fatter. If you want to say, roughly look look. Even if I did not explain to you what this means, look what they say. Roughly like around. Roughly means almost four 
times larger. Oh, wow. That's a lot. On the average. Imagine no, the average. Muaddal, right? Yeah. <laughs> if a human is bitten, bite, bite, bit, bitten. <laughs> so bitten is verb three. Bitten. If a human is bitten, look, it's this is passive. Huh? By, look at the by, huh? passive. By a black widow, the spider's poison, you know what poison means, huh? Can yes. cause, yes, severe illness and pain. Okay? Black widow's bites have occasionally, sometimes, occasionally, like, you know, sometimes resulted in death. So usually it's not death, but you have, you get ill, you, you, you suffer from lots of pain. Sometimes it could be, you know, you could die. But it is certainly not the norm for a black widow's <laughs> widow bites to be mortal. Mortal means like to kill you. And not like everybody who's bitten by a black widow dies, okay? It's not common for people to die. But, you know, there are some rare cases where some people died. Anyway, guys, in line two, line this is line one, this is line two, right? It says, the word widow means line two. This is the, the black widow. What does the word widow mean? How do we know the meaning? We can just continue to read because we want to, because here they tell you sometimes you can find the meaning from the context. So let's see. The black widow got its name because the female has been known to kill the male after mating. So if the male is dead, huh, that means the spider is alone, was married, was married, but the husband is gone. So she is a widow. Widow means in Arabic, and in English, Armale. yes. Armale. And here, Armale. where does the, where can you find this? A type of poison, the dead male spider, the human victim of the spider, the no. female whose mate Number has D. died. No. D. D. Doctor. A female whose D. mate. A female whose mate, whose mate means husband. Husband. Mate means husband or wife. But we said a male, a female. That means the mate is the husband who has died. Okay, that's what you know, a widow is. Which of the following is closest in meaning to the word globular? I So globular, we, we describe the body of the spider as globular. You have seen spiders before. What do you think? It's from globe, by the way. You know, globe, have you seen the globe of the world? What's the globe? It's like the ball that has all the continents on it and country names and so on. Got it? So when we say that, we, we describe the body of the spider as globular. What does that mean? Round. Good. Round. Not earthen, not luminescent, not green in color. It's round. That's what it means. Look up these words, guys, for your sake. Okay? So the word ample. Remember when we said ample and then we started talking about how big the size of the... Here it is. The size of the, the spider is. So ample in line seven. This is line seven. Where is it? Here it is. Hmm. Uh, where is it? Uh, ample here. More ample than the male. What is that? M more ample. That means like bigger. No. How do we know that it means bigger? Large. After that, it's, it's, it's roughly four times larger on average, which means ample means feminine, large in size, dotted with colors or normal. Large in size. Large, yeah. large in size. If you look B. at four... B. Which of the following has the same <coughs> meaning as the word mortal? I think this is not the first time we talked about the word mortal. Remember when I said that God is immortal? We human beings are mortals. That means yes. time. So the word mortal, if you want to take a look at it, at line ten, in line 10, I mean, where is it? Here it is. The last word in the whole paragraph. Their bites uh, you know, are not considered to be mortal. They don't kill you. That's what it means. Remember when we said that you know, some people have died, but I mean they're not mortal. So they are not, mortal means deadly, painful, poisonous, sickening. Deadly, doctor. Exactly, because yeah. mortal means that that you die. You die from the, uh, let me say, the bite, okay? That the bite is deadly. We describe the bite as deadly, killing you. This is what it means, really, okay? So this is like, guys, what the lesson is about, all right? And... um. You guys need to ask any question before I tell you guys good night for today. We have covered four skills, and I'm sure that all of you guys are tired. And inshallah, we will meet tomorrow if 
you know, you have anything guys to talk about, I don't mind before our class, if we're not, if it's something outside of the skills, I mean, we can talk about it like just before our class. Okay. So you guys have an enjoyable evening and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Goodbye. See you. Goodbye. Goodbye. See you, doctor.